What is up guys? We're going to be answering the question, what is double URL encoding? And we're going to be using this technique to run a directory traversal attack. We're going to be using this lab, file path traversal, traversal sequences stripped with superfluous URL to code. Now we'll get to the meaning of superfluous a little bit later in the lab. For now, let's just fire up the lab. The goal is to retrieve the contents of the Etsy password file. So we have burp proxy proxying traffic, and we know that the file path traversal vulnerability is to do with these images here. So let's just open this image in a new tab. We'll also just inspect the image request in burp, and we're going to send it to the repeater. And as you can see, it doesn't have the params at the moment. The param is file name and the value is 73.jpg. Let's just add that to our request query parameters. Let's send that to the back end. Let's just confirm we're in the right place. And we can see we have this image of the monster truck. Now the goal is to retrieve the contents of the Etsy password file. And one of the ways that we've been able to do that is submit a file name value with three traversal sequences. So to come up a directory three times, followed by Etsy, followed by password. Let's click apply changes, let's send that. It's not going to work in this case, it's going to say no such file. Now we've jumped to the location of the file, we already know that it's up three directories. It might take some trial and error, but we've seen from previous labs that this is the location of the Etsy password file. However, we're getting the response, no such file from the server. And the reason is it's not processing these traversal sequences. And normally these traversal sequences would be URL encoded when sent from the browser. And Burp has a built-in option to decode. So if we instead type our traversal sequences in this box, you can see in the box above, we actually get a URL encoded version of this particular string. So if we click apply changes, we can now see in the request that those traversal sequences, in particular the forward slash, has been URL, sometimes known as percent encoded. So a forward slash is now percent to F. And that's because forward slash is considered a reserved character. When we're using a URL in the URL bar, we often use forward slashes to communicate the path to the server. So we'd have www.example.com forward slash something, forward slash something else. So we shouldn't really be trying to submit forward slashes in our URL unless they are part of that path definition. So this is an example of a character that gets URL encoded before it's sent to the server. Now, if we send that to the back end, we still get the same response, no such file. So what's happening at the back end is the server is receiving this URL encoded string. And of course, the server is receiving URL encoded strings all of the time, it knows what to do with them, it decodes them, so it ends up with the raw plain text version of the param that we've submitted, looks at it and says, this has traversal sequences in, I'm not going to process those traversal sequences. Now this is where double URL encoding comes in. And we can actually use burp to do that for us. We can add a second encoding module here and choose decoded from URL encoding. Now, if we type our string in this final box, then our value is going to be URL encoded twice. Let's just have a look at that. So we have our plain text string in the first decoded from box. It's then URL encoded, and that's what we can see in that second box. So instead of forward slash, we have percent two F, but it's then URL encoded again. Now notice we still have the two and the F. These are not reserved characters. So basically two F gets encoded as two F. It doesn't matter how many times we URL encode this string. Those are not special characters. However, the percent sign is, and when the percent sign gets encoded again, it becomes percent two five. So instead of percent two F, we have percent two five two F then again, percent two five two F. So as we can imagine, this is a fairly strong indicator that it's a double URL encoded string when we see this percent two five. 
because naturally the single encoded string is going to have quite a few percent characters and those percent characters get encoded as percent two five. So anytime we see a large distribution of percent two five, there's a reasonable chance that it's a double URL encoded string, or in some cases, even a triple URL encoded string. So percent two five two F would become percent two five two five two F. Now, if we choose apply changes in burp, we can now add our double URL encoded payload as our file name param. And for now, I'm just going to submit this to the backend. Let's have a look at the response and we'll analyze this afterwards. So what we can see here is the contents of the Etsy password file. Now we know this application has some sanitization taking place where it's attempting to prevent us from using traversal sequences. However, when we double URL encoded our payload, we managed to bypass that. So what just happened? Let's pretend for a moment that we are the server and we've just received this double URL encoded string. Now the server's used to receiving URL encoded strings all the time. So the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to decode that string. Now the server possibly doesn't realize it's a double URL encoded string. So after decoding the string, it gets this intermediary version of the string, which is actually the single URL encoded version of our payload. It then scans this for any disallowed sequences, such as the dot dot forward slash traversal sequence. Well, there's no dot dot forward slash traversal sequence there. So the server is going to assume that this is a safe payload. Now, ordinarily, it would be a safe payload because in most cases, an application is only going to URL decode a URL encoded string once. It's not going to do it twice. But let's just imagine that the next step for the server is to then pass this string deeper into the application to the specific module that's going to look up and return this image. And let's say that particular module in the web app also has a decoding function. It's going to look at the string and if it thinks this string is still URL encoded, it's going to run a URL decode on that string until it thinks it has a plain text version of what it should be receiving. Well, now there's a problem because we've already gone through the security check that's already been bypassed. Now a module deeper in the application is taking that string URL decoding it, not running any security checks. And the end result is this plain text string with three traversal sequences, which is now going to result in a directory traversal attack. Now returning to the lab description, this is why the word superfluous was used. And the term superfluous means unnecessary, especially through being more than enough. In other words, this string has already been URL decoded. It does not need to be URL decoded again because we certainly don't expect our users to be submitting double URL encoded strings. So not only was this second URL decode unnecessary in terms of the vast majority of legitimate usages of the application, but it's also what caused the vulnerability because that second URL decode was performed after the security checks have already been bypassed. Now, web applications are created for a very wide array of reasons, and there could be a legitimate context where double URL encoding is required, or the application needs to try and recursively decode a URL encoded string that's been URL encoded an unknown amount of times. We don't want to say that such contexts are impossible. But what is the lesson here for the developer? It's that we need to run the security checks after we finish decoding the string, because if we just decode the string once, run a security check, and then an additional module in our application decides to run additional URL decodes on that string, well, that's allowed the user to bypass the security check, which is obviously a huge vulnerability. The summary here in the lab description puts it nicely. The application blocks input containing path traversal sequences. It then performs a URL decode of the input 
before using it, thus creating the vulnerability. All right, I hope you've learned a little bit about double encoding, why it might be useful for a penetration tester. And we've also seen that in practice as we execute a directory traversal or file path traversal attack. Thanks very much for watching, guys.